Damien, did anything interesting happen to you this week? I got a call last night from a uh, long time, long time client, a successful businessman uh, out of somewhere in the South. I'm not going to disclose the state. And he was on his way to, with his family, for like a little vacation, and he was going to visit a couple of classic car shows and purchase a car, you know. And he's one of these guys that has enough money in the account to purchase a car in cash. And in classic car shows, that's what you do. It's a kind of, uh, it's a cash business. And he'd been in touch with several dealers, you know, via Facebook, WhatsApp, text messages, and of course had all these records. And so he drove from where he was at all the way to another state in the south and uh, with his family he found that he didn't like the car and at the end of the weekend he drove back so he's driving back yesterday and it's about you know a 10 12 hour drive back home and the other thing you should know about this client is that he's a u.s citizen born here in fact not naturalized but ethnically he is mexican as was everybody in the car with him. And I get a call from him at 9.30 at night, which my clients know not to call me then unless there's an emergency. And so if I have a call on my personal cell phone, I'm just going to assume it's an emergency and I'll always pick up. And I was hoping it wasn't anything terrible. In fact, I was hoping it was something related to, you know, work we do on the business side for the client. And so I didn't expect what I, what I was told, which is that, this client had been just walked out of a Department of Homeland Security office, had his personal phone, his business phone, his laptop, his father-in-law's laptop, his father-in-law's phone, and twenty-five thousand dollars of cash confiscated, and then he was let go without any charges. The second thing you should know about this client is that he was a state trooper for a long time with statewide jurisdiction. Those you with any law enforcement knowledge know to get statewide jurisdiction as a trooper, you gotta be a pretty smart cookie and you gotta be a pretty dependable one. Uh, so in addition to being a business, really good businessman, he's a, and a US citizen, he's a state trooper. And what had happened is that he'd been going through an Alabama county, uh, Southern Alabama, and he'd been pulled over. His father-in-law was actually driving. They were pulled over and the police officer, who wasn't a state trooper, he was a police officer, asked the father for driver's license and then asked him, who was in, driver, in the passenger seat, for his driver's license and identification. Didn't ask anybody in the back. Those were all his wife and his two-year-old daughter mm. who was with him. And uh, nobody in the car but my client was really a fluent English speaker, but that, and that's important. And so right away, the client's like, hey, I, I understand why you're pulling us over. I was a state trooper, or probably the only license plate from my state on this road. Everybody else is from Alabama. And because he believes in, or maybe believed as of today, but yesterday, because he still believed in the good heartedness of everyone around him, he cooperated. And he told the trooper, yeah, I'm carrying cash. It's not too much cash, but it's, you know, some substantial amount. That's because I went to buy this car. Here are the, here's what it is. Here's my back and forth with the car dealers and everything. And even though, like, later his spouse would go on to say, hey, uh, you know, I heard the troopers talking and, uh, you know, they said uh, that everything checked out, you know, mm -hmm. that everything checked out, everything matched up. Uh, Department of Homeland Security is called specifically the HSI division, Homeland Security Inspections, HSI. And he was brought in to the Department of Homeland Security office uh, there in Alabama. And uh, essentially they proceeded to go on a fishing expedition where they started asking him, without him ever having been said he's from Mexico, how many times he sends money to Mexico, how many relatives he has there. And it became really clear that this whole stop, which had no basis in actual law was a fishing expedition for a brown man who looked Mexican in a state that prides itself on its white Christian nationalism. He was made fun of for the names of 
his siblings, he would call. Wow. He was uh, made to feel like he shouldn't have money. He was lied to and intimidated into trying to, into being asked, he was asked to open up his phone for search even though there was no search warrant. He was told that the search warrant would be gotten later if he refused to give them his phones. Again, there's no reason for him to be with the Department of Homeland Security. This is a U.S. citizen driving through a state with his family. And one of the law enforcement agents who wasn't with DHS but was with that local police department said, well, based on what you told us about what you do, uh, we're going to go ahead and hold this money because it's just a drop in the hat for you until we figure out where it came from. Even though he had given, he offered to provide all receipts for the money, which his family sent over, you know, he'd offered to give the vice president of the bank where the money was taken from a call because he's a local businessman that um, had very good connections with his local bank. But none of it was listened to. And at the end of the day, they tried to send him out of there with a receipt of goods that they were confiscating. Again, including his work phone, his personal phone, his laptop, and the father-in-law's uh, personal phone with a receipt that didn't even list the $25,000 they were going to take because they said it would take too long to count. Now, he being of sound mind, said, well, I have all the time in the world for you to count it. So then they went back, counted the money, and then put the money on the receipt. But they were prepared to let him go without putting that down. Now, the reason I'm thinking about this is, number one, I'm, I'm furious. So it, I spent most of this morning um, talking to other attorneys, talking to the FBI, providing a report. The FBI is interested in looking at this as an, um, for an investigation into this. We're finding local lawyers that are going to hopefully rain hell on these um, departments, which essentially violated Fourth Amendment search and seizures rights in order to try and take money away from who they initially suspected was an undocumented immigrant to them, everybody, every immigrant's a Mexican, passing through their county. In an area that apparently, according to other lawyers I've talked to today, is well known for being a search and seizure county because that's how the police there make the majority of their money. What they didn't count on is on this guy having somebody behind him, you know, a full legal team. What makes me mad about that is that they probably get away with this all the time. You yeah. know, they do pull over somebody that's undocumented, somebody who doesn't have the means that my client has to hire three or four lawyers, right, to go after this. Um, who may have to give up their entire life savings that they're carrying with them because they can't use banks to these corrupt assholes. And uh, even though, like, I've, you know, I've, I'm, I'm a pretty, as far as immigration lawyers go, I've, I've, you know, if you had a spectrum, a political spectrum, I would be, I'm not, I'm not on the conservative side by any stretch, but I'm not, I'm not on the far left wing. You know, I'm, I'm an old school liberal. Okay, I'm an old school liberal. And um, it just infuriates me because we're going to rain hell and we're, we're going to get results for this client. We're going to get that money back. We're going to hopefully, you know, get an investigation going into these departments in Alabama. But thousands of people that drive through that area won't, that drive through other areas in the United States. You know, the reality of needing green books for many people is still very much a reality in many parts of this country. So I came in today hoping to shoot uh, a lot of videos with Keith um, and, uh, you know, we had a happy thing. We had the parole in place announcement was made today. We put that video out today. But really, I've been consumed with kind of anger and the need to try and get justice for this client. Um, there was a time when I was a, you know, detention center removal defense attorney when I was uh, younger and just starting out in this field and I and I remember this feeling you know where where the client feels helpless and abused and used and victimized because they are you know this guy was basically robbed at gunpoint right uh, the only difference here is that this guy actually has money to fight and we've watched with increasing dismay I think 
as the justice system has shown us how much money is required to actually have a fair fight and how much money you can have to actually make it an unfair fight in your favor. But for the vast majority of people, that means that it's hard to argue against their assessment that the system really is unfair. That's what I feel. It's a tough day. It is an angry day. But for that client, it's a tough day. It's going to be a very tough several days. And you add up enough cases like that, it becomes a very tough country to live in sometimes. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say.